Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? Today is Friday, and welcome to another edition of On the Needle. This one is special because today is also Cinco de Mayo. So shout out to everyone who's celebrating if it's a part of your culture, and for those who are just celebrating because you love and appreciate the holiday as well. So speaking of holidays, I'll get ready to jump right into it. John Legend, his album, Bigger Love. So let's take a moment and think back. This album came out in 2020, which was the beginning of the pandemic. A lot of things were unknown at that point. We didn't really know the seriousness of what this nasty virus would become at that point. It was bad, but we didn't realize that, you know, there would be all these other strands and so on and so forth. But um, I, so I can imagine for an artist like him who has consistently put out music, I would say at least every year and a half, two years or so, he puts out a full album, um, probably had a lot of pushback and questions and maybe even battles within himself if he would put out the album or not during such a time as COVID. So if you all also remember, that's when the verses really started to blow up. So for those that don't know who, what Versus is, uh, was spearheaded by Timbaland and Swiss Beats. And it's basically this virtual uh, tit for tat of hits, if you will. Usually each artist brings about 20 hits or so. Um, now, when John Legend did his, uh, he and Alicia Keys were in the same room. Uh, so they were together, uh, both of them being piano players. It was kind of cool because you got to see uh, some of them perform, some of their songs being performed on the keys. Um, but this album, Bigger Love, was released on another important holiday, uh, Juneteenth, uh, so Friday 19th of 2020. And I just, you know, y'all know, I'm a sucker for some artwork. This cover is so cool. I love how, like, the galaxy is kind of represented inside of his hair, and then you have these flowers here. So it's it's flowery, it's colorful, but somehow I feel like this is still a masculine cover, if you will. Um, and then we flip on the back. It has, I don't know about y'all, but this this font and this kind of paintbrush text just makes me think about a really good hole-in-the-wall restaurant. <laughs> like, it might not be the cleanest, but, you know, maybe a couple of the shingles of the roof are falling off, but the food's going to be good. <laughs> You're going to want to come. So it, this album, to me, it feels like a big cookout type of feel. It's, to me, it's the perfect album I think I could have reviewed today uh, for a day like today for Cinco de Mayo. Um, it's not colored. It's not a colored vinyl, so it's standard. But he put some thought into this packaging. Um, there's this whole celebration theme. Um, so there's like these messages on the sleeves that are listed here so pretty cool pretty cool i don't know if that was him that came up with this art design or that was his team or whoever it was it's a double album so there's this is the other album that's um included in the packaging so really great oh and i love an affordable album too <laughs> so i say this is one of the more affordable albums of his collection at the time when I bought it, because I got it when it first came out, um, it was under $25. I don't know how much it's going for now, but it's definitely not a record that will break, break the bank. For those of you who collect albums and things like that, you know that um, it's not unheard of for some albums to go as much as $50 for sale or even higher than that. So with John Legend, I think that he had a big task and a lot to prove with this album. What I mean by that is, although it wasn't one of his most commercially successful albums, I think John Legend, when Ordinary People came out, I think it was probably, and you all just wait, feel free to weigh in on this if you agree or disagree. Songs like Ordinary People are probably, probably a little bit of a blessing and a curse because the song was so huge it really took off um on the r&b side as well as pop i feel like it was an r&b record and it was a pop record because of its crossover appeal 
and it was very bare bones, not a lot of tricky production, just kind of his voice and the piano. So I think sometimes when you have big hits like that, the expectation is to deliver more music like that. To case in point, All of Me uh, is a song where I think he kind of somehow was able to replicate that success. Um, All of Me, when the year that that song came out, I mean, you could not escape it at anybody's wedding. It was played everywhere. You heard it at red lights, you know, everywhere. So with Bigger Love, what I really appreciate about this album is I feel like he took a little bit of a detour. It's cohesive. I love a good concept album. You all know that. And it's this celebratory island dance kind of feel to it a little bit, if you will. Now, I think part of that is a secret weapon. And also, you know, I love reading the liner notes of an album. So when we look at production and songwriting, you know, y'all know John Legend pretty much writes all of his songs. He's had a hand in production here and there for some of the songs as well. But as far as that pen, it's pretty much him if he's singing it for the most part. Um, production wise on here, not a, a lot of huge names that most people may recognize, I would say, besides maybe like Ryan Tedder. Oh, and Anderson Pack. Um, the song that he's featured on One Life, um, he produced on that one. Also, there's a producer, Oak. Never heard of Oak, but let me tell you, Oak is jamming because <laughs> Ooh La La, which Oak produced, as well as Actions, are two of my favorite songs on this album by far. So, you know, hey, in my opinion, Oak could have just carried this whole album out. Not to knock the contributions from the other producers, but I feel like he or she, whoever it is, did a great job. Um, what's interesting though, is when you read these notes, so the executive producer of this album is John Legend, which it's not a surprise, I don't think to anyone, and also Raphael Sadiq. So what Raphael Sadiq did here, as he did, for those that don't know, he was also the musical director for several seasons, if not all of the seasons of Insecure, um, which I think had a hand in why people loved Insecure so much because you also loved the music as much as you loved the shows. A lot of times you would hear about up and coming artists. I remember uh, SZA was pretty new when one of her songs was featured on Insecure and you see where she's at now. So. I think a great executive producer knows how to put their stamp on a project without interfering with the artists and their creativity and what they bring to the table. And I think that's exactly what happened here with this partnership with John Legend and Raphael Sadiq. I've looked all through these line of notes. I'm, I may be missing one, but there is no writing credit or individual song credit that I see here from Raphael Sadiq. But knowing that he joined John Legend in this co-executive producing credit, it makes a lot of sense why the album sounds the way that it did. Um, because I think Raphael Sadiq is one of the most underrated producers. He probably would be in my top five of all time to me. Um, but anyway, this album I feel like is so great as with any of John Legend's albums, he has a few features, but he does a great job of not letting the features overshadow him. One that I think is really beautiful on here is the one with Janae Aiku, uh, You Move, I Move, which I was a little skeptical of this one, to be honest, because I feel like John Legend has a stronger voice than Janae, Janae Aiku, but their voices together really blend well, even better than I expected that they would. Um, also, the album features, let's see, Rhapsody, Camper, well, I don't see Anderson Pack on here, but I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that he does appear on the One Life song. Gary Clark Jr., um, yeah, and Janae I. Cook. So, not a lot of features, but definitely a handful. This album, I would say, is a definite Q 
keeper and a necessity for those who are big John Legend fans to me. You know, I would put this one up against any of his albums, really. Um, his first album is my favorite. That's still my favorite. Um, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily as good as that, but it definitely stands against and taller than, I would say, um, a lot of the albums that he's released after that debut album. So let me know what you all think. Bigger Love, this is the On The Needle review for this week. Let me know what your favorite tracks are. Have you heard the album? Have you not heard the album? Did you miss it? There wasn't a lot of promotion for it, so it's quite possible a lot of people, unless you're just a really big John Legend fan, this album may have slipped under the radar for a lot of people because it wasn't really heavily promoted. And again, like I mentioned, this was during the onset of COVID. So a lot of things were unsure at that point, but great album. Love it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure also in a few weeks on June 1st, make sure that you tune in to my other YouTube channel, uh, where I have a podcast called The Water Bear Podcast. We are kicking off season two on Thursday, June 1st, and these episodes are going to be live streamed on YouTube. So trying something new this season, and make sure you all go over to the channel and check that out as well.